Well, hello everyone. Thanks for coming outside me today. Today we're down here at my local archery shop, Jim Sports Center here in Clearfield, PA. It's where I uh, cameo appearance, if you will, throughout the spring and summer months uh, when I'm not in school. Uh, and we're going to test some bows down here today. We are a Bowtech Matthews Hoyt and then a Diamond uh, Mission and then a whole bunch of Crossbow brand uh, dealer here in Central PA. And if you're interested in checking out the new Bowtechs, the new Hoyts, the new Matthews, so on and so forth, come down and check us out. Hello everyone. Thanks for coming outside me today. Today, yes, we are indoors in the <laughs> basement range here of Jim Sports Center here in Clearfield, PA, which is my home shop. Even though we're inside and pouring down rain, it gets better because we do get to test a bow. This is the new Hoyt Ventum Pro 33. We also have the 30, but I'm a strong believer in if the cam cycle feels pretty similar between two bows, string angle change, it might change a little bit in the draw, but usually it's not that bad. And usually if the longer axle to axle bow is all right, it's pretty good chance that the 30 is as well. Usually the uh, longer the axle to axle, the cam geometry and riser geometry should feel better e because usually the eye a little bit on the slower side as well. Uh, specs for the bow somewhere here on the screen. I'm very happy that Hoyt has gone to a different cam system than the hybrid cam that they ran for two decades. Uh, they are still running the three track binary cam system that they introduced last year. However, I think the most disappointing part is that they do not retrofit and cross over to each other. They only ran this three track for one year and then in this second year here they already have modules and cams that do not intermix with previous or future models in this case. That's a real big disappointment. Hoyt has better, Hoyt's better than that uh, to do something like that to customers. And I know people say, well, you know, it is what it is. Well, Hoyt has moved into where most manufacturers are on a rotating module, which is also great uh, and very simple, easy to work on three track binaries. Keep it simple for the customers and for the shops. Just, I don't get it. I really just don't get it. Otherwise, it looks like a typical Hoyt. Uh, we do have the bridge riser that they've been doing for like 30 years, it seems like. A uh, good solid end platform. They do have their little, uh, whatever the heck this thing is down here at the bottom of the riser. Uh, still has this really wide limb pocket look they've kept since the Nitrum back in 2015, 2014, and that flavor, which was probably, in my opinion, one of the better years that Hoyt has had in a decade or so. Uh, although definitely uh, this last year was a much better, this cam set was a much better bow than they've ever really produced uh, since pretty much then. Adjustable let off right on the cam, moving this peg in and out gets you 80 or 85%. It's set at 85%. 2970 for specs, we do have the chrono here. Three different arrows. We're gonna start off with a 350 gram uh, Maxima Blue RZ. I don't know what the IBO on this bow is. Knowing Hoyt, it's probably in the 335 range. IBO is 334, so I was pretty close at 335. 4.67 pounds. I think that's silly. They said 4.67. Just call it 4.7 to be honest with yourself. It definitely feels like a four and a half pound bow. Balance is solid. Uh, it does want to tip forward a little bit, as you kind of see here. Um, and even without the arrow knock, it still, still wants to tip forward a little bit. 4.7 pounds is pretty beefy, although Hoyt arguably has some of the beefier risers in the industry. Uh, but that's still pretty pretty thick for uh, for a 33 inch axle to axle bow. There are a lot of other bows that are less than four and a half that are 34, 35 inch axle to axle. Let's do the draw cycle here. Uh, again, 2970, 85% let off. That's not too bad. Doesn't feel like it humps over too hard. Let's try to let this down. Okay, it's pretty quick. 85% load up. I like myself, I like it closer to 80. That's not atrocious. That kind of, it feels very similar to the, uh, if I remember, the Ventum of last year, 2021. Yeah, that's, that's actually a little bit more of a dump than I would expect. Let's shoot it through the uh, chrono here. String angle is pretty solid, even the drawing is about two inches too short for me. Wow, that is dead on the shot. But even for a 350 grain arrow, that was quite dead on the shot. That was very, that's even more dead than the, uh, than the Matthews was, that I just tested a few minutes ago. 324 feet a second. So that's 10 feet per second, close to IBO there, and we're at 29 inches of draw length. So at 30, we're definitely getting close to 334. Uh, that's actually pretty snappy. Um, and that's at 85% let off too, if you're interested, if you, Took it all the way out, took it to 80% if we get a little faster. 
Uh, here's a 400 grain arrow. Yeah, it's a pretty solid dump over. Back wall is very solid. This is this style of can system is the best we've had in a while. This three track last year and this year. That's still pretty quick. Yeah, 308 uh, for a 400 grain arrow there. Let's do 466. Yeah, 400 grain arrow to still be going 308. That's pretty snappy. 2970. Yeah, it feels like a void. 287. So a pretty good drop off there. Um, it's still faster than any of the other bows that I've tested. I think the Matthews was pretty close to that as well. Um, yeah, right there. I mean, that feels like that should be very close, both the Matthews and this to IBO speeds. Uh, and then 287 for 466 grain arrow. That's heavier than a lot of guys that would shoot a 27, 28, 29 inch draw uh, with a stock arrow right off the shelf shooting 100, 125, 150 grain points. So 287 for a hunting rig, that's pretty solid. Uh, and very dead when it got to that 466 grain arrow. Very impressive. Uh, that's arguably one of the most dead uh, Hoyt I've shot just right off the shelf. And that's pretty solid for a 33 inch glow platform as well. I think Hoyt should continue to stick with this cam style for quite some time. It'd be nice if their modules and whatnot were kind of a CrossFit feel to it, but all in all, you know, they've got their new integrated front portion on the riser. They're, they have their dovetail mount on the back, so they're doing some fancy stuff. Um, definitely have some fancy price points, definitely more expensive than most of the flagship little bows in the market, but it's got the speed and lack of vibe to kind of back it up. So it's a pretty solid bow off from here from 2022 for Hoyt. Uh, this and the Ventum 30 Pro. So, if you have any further questions about this bow that I might have left you with, please do follow links in the description below. Average Jack Archie, both Facebook and Instagram, averagejackarchie at gmail.com, or you can drop a comment here on YouTube. And I hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, archery hunting if you so choose. Definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation. Come down to Jim Sports Center in Clearfield, PA. If you're in the central PA area, and test drive the Ventum 33 for yourself, and we'll get to see you next time.